Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, coming at you from Southern California, uh, where it is still uh, somewhat of a summertime feel. Uh, we haven't really truly entered any kind of fall or winter type situation yet, so we are supposed to get some rain tonight. Hopefully that will happen. Uh, my whole garden and yard will appreciate some much needed water uh so i wanted to read i i just read this article in the new york times um will we survive climate change and i wanted to read a very good rebuttal to this by meteorologist nick humphrey so this video will be that he posts on Facebook, I apologize for the very long post, but this is an important statement for me and I want to make it easy to share. Doom and gloom folks like me are constantly thrown under the bus for saying that there's nothing that can be done realistically on climate change. I have no issue with our global society doing things to alleviate the effects of climate change as much as possible and limit the suffering and hardship of people and our biosphere. This is a moral oblig obligation, I believe. However, the idea that doom as opponents call it, is a self-fulfilling prophecy is laughable and assumes that humans are in complete control of the planetary climate change underway. We are not. Methane, powerful greenhouse gas, as well as carbon dioxide, in just recent years has begun to pour out of the Ar Arctic, subsea, and land at increasing rates on top of increasing human emissions. The planet is losing the ability to reflect sunlight because of the decreasing, decreasing Arctic sea ice and alpine glaciation allowing the planet to take in more heat, which it will retain. The ocean is becoming saturated with carbon dioxide as it undergoes acidification. Tropical rainforests are becoming emitters of carbon and not sinks. The oceans are warming rapidly and retaining massive amounts of heat into the climate system. The planet has enough CO2 and other greenhouse gases to warm to a hothouse climate, etc., etc. Population declines and extinctions are increasing, and in other words, there are processes now beyond human control which cannot be stopped simply by humans stopping things. They must and will continue to full fruition. The incredible level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere make this reality absolute. It can be called a doomer viewpoint. However, I call it reality. Humans are not in control of everything and this seems to be an extremely difficult but harsh lesson for a species so used to controlling its own destiny. You might ask how, how can a meteorologist with a master's degree in expertise in weather forecasting know more than the big PhD climate scientists who say we can still turn this around? I actually do not. These problems are well known and have been discussed among scientists and technically by the laws of physics. As the UN Governmental Panel on Climate Change has noted, it is possible to remove the massive amounts of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, which must be done in addition to ending use of fossil fuels to stop and reduce the planet's warming. However, what's possible by the laws of physics versus what's physically practical are two different things. The enormous amount of energy and land areas which would be required to build a carbon capture and storage infrastructure make it extremely impractical, to put it mildly, as well as far, far above any industrial scale process humanity has ever created. And to build both a global carbon capture storage and renewable energy infrastructure to power a growing civilization would add to the tens of billions of tons of carbon dioxide added yearly just from humans into the atmosphere, which then has to also be removed or climate change will accelerate even further. You need, to, you need business as usual to speed up to get off of business as usual. These are well-known paradoxes. Scientists who have taken the torch of trying to deal with the difficult task, not helped by outright climate-denying campaigns, of communicating this mind-boggling predicament have, in many cases, tasked themselves with being climate solutions champions so as to give hope that science and technology, along with individual action, will save our world and not paralyze people with fear. This is the strategy used by many public communicating sci climate scientists, Mann, Heho, and others. But to me, scientists have an obligation to be providers to the hard truths and not social engineers of hope or despair. People have a right to react as they see fit to terrible news, but we should be like doctors providing a diagnosis and not cheerleaders of hope versus despair. 
if certain treatments can't work or are unrealistic, we must say so. <clears throat> this does not mean one cannot act. Humans are actors and hope is part of the human be uh, being human. But we need a different kind of hope and action. My hope would be society moving to a deep adaptation, recognizing the catastrophic to existential crisis underway and do everything possible to reduce harms as much and as long as possible. Migrate people away from coastal cities, which will be underwater and, and increasingly under threat from more powerful storms. Help those migrating from the tropics because of climate change. The current caravan isn't just about geopolitics nor the Syrian civil war. Droughts are increasing in these areas. And allocate resources more fairly to provide basic needs to those most in need within and between nations. Have more restrictions on not only greenhouse gas emissions, but food, water, waste, recognizing the predicted declines in supply. And insane deforestation practices and trading of products which promote deforestation and extinction of species. Forget stopping climate change. Humanity is not even doing these physically easier, uh, using the term loosely here, big deal measures to slow the extinction of species and suffering of fellow humans. Why? Because we are too busy either denying the problem altogether or denying time their denying there are irreversible consequences we must accept. My doomer mentality to some is simple realism. We do not control nature's responses to us. We are a part of nature. And what people can control, what people can control they refuse to do on an industrial and governmental level. We cannot stop climate change. Saying that is not a goofy, self-fulfilling prophecy. It is a reality. My only hope is that society realizes this and stops screwing out with climate denialism or harebrained schemes to stop the mess that's already been created and, and the irreversible response by our world. Instead, work to actually do things which show compassion for each other and our fellow species. I thought that was a, a really uh, well done rebuttal <clears throat> to this article. Uh, a moment and uh you know what i enjoyed about this um <clears throat> rebuttal was that um you know nick is taking the the realistic um response to climate change uh which you know i think if we're going to do anything about climate change if we are going to have hope or you know if we are going to find a way out of this, we have to take in the reality that we are in. We have to take the real, the um, the factual um, scenario that's unfolding and try to mitigate and do what we can um, with all the scenarios that are playing out. Um, can we do carbon capture? Capture? Can we do? Um, solar radiation management, which is, you know, a very scary proposition. There's probably going to be extremely large consequences because of that, that we don't want to have happen. Um, you know, it is some madman, uh, elite type person out there scheming some kind of like limited nuclear war in order to create fallout and, you know, um, kill a lot of birds that they might think, you know, is worth doing probably there's probably some some mad people out there thinking about that too um but realistically you know we're in a bad way and um we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stop what we're doing before we can even talk about doing something about it or keeping us at 2c or 1.5c which is ridiculous um we're not going to do that um we're not going to do that without some serious uh, cooperation globally, and the likelihood of that is very, very small. Um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try, but let's just be realistic about what we're trying to do. Um, have just a few minutes left in this video, and I'm I'm going to link that Facebook post in the description box below, and I want to. Just read this quickly, read this article from Sky News. No snow in Lapland as rising temperatures take sparkle away from dream holidays. Holidays have been canceled, families are crestfallen, and projections suggest a further decline in snowfall in coming years. Really quickly, I just wanted to say I talked to somebody who was going to Napa for Thanksgiving yesterday, 
and and you you know they're like yeah we're going to Napa but the air quality is really terrible right because of the fires up there um it has led to school closures and extremely unhealthy air quality and uh limiting people's activity is the answer to that so you know yeah we're going on vacation and you know we possibly shouldn't be outside breathing the air um this is our current reality in climate change exceptional weather in lapland means no snow has fallen on santa's homeland this year unseasonably mild conditions which are likely to become more common as climate changes causes global temperatures to rise has left many families crestfallen by dream holidays that failed to crystallize at a time when northern Lapland would normally have 20 to 30 centimeters of snow on the ground, there are now more, no more than a couple of centimeters in isolated patches, and the majority of the area has no snow at all. <clears throat> Kim Baker, who is due to take her four-year-old daughter on a holiday at the beginning of December, told Sky News the lack of snow means that activities she booked, such as husky sledding and skiing, will be impossible. She said provider TUI, who charged uh, 2,100 pounds for the four-day break for a family of three, had said she will be charged if she cancels the holiday and told her to wait and see if snow arrives. My daughter may sees only five and it's holiday of a lifetime type thing, a chance to go to Lapland while she still believes in Santa. Woo. Well, there's a whole lot of cultural programming in that, in that sentence. Uh, that might possibly need to be uh, countered. I feel like it's taken all the magic out of it. Long-term weather forecasts from the Finnish Meteorological Institute forecast show, show temperatures are dropping and conditions are now frosty, but predict no snow for the next 10 days. While uh, Orville Siskonen, I have no idea how to pronounce, um, these Nordic names, a meteorologist at the Institute said the lack of snow was an exceptional weather event of the kind that happens no more than once every 30 years or every other year in climate, uh, abrupt climate change. Uh, while one unusual weather event is not a reliable indicator of long-term change, FMI projections indicate drastic decline in snow in Finland over the next 100 years. Well, as long as we have 100 years. Projections suggest that in northern Finland, the number of the number of snow cover days may decrease by 20 to 30 percent. Blah 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 blah. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of this article, but I will link it below. You get the gist of what's happening. So yes, um, if the people in the know, if the elites, if the governments of the world, if the corporations who all know what's happening, who, who all know the direness of the situation, uh, were doing their human uh, an ethical duty to alert people to what the actual problem is and how dire it is and what the consequences are and what it is we should be doing about it. They would be telling people, yeah, you can't just fly to Scandinavia or Lapland for a holiday this year. Sorry, you don't get to do that. Uh, yeah, you don't get to, you know, order things from China, um, from Amazon every day because, you know, you just don't get to do that. Um, you know, what you should be thinking about doing, what we all should be thinking about doing is localizing our food production, creating commune, communes so that we can sustain ourselves on a localized level um, because we're shutting down all transportation, shipping, air, air travel, car travel, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, transportation on foot, bicycles, and, you know, possibly public transportation, you know, go for it. Uh, but obviously, you know, transportation and the burning of fossil fuels would have to be limited, extremely limited. So yes, uh, if we were, we were telling people the truth, if we were talking about this in an actual factual kind of way, uh, we'd be telling people that they are going to have to rearrange their lives um, on, a, on a radical level <laughs> right away. And that it would be much easier for people to do this, right? You know, if, if all of us in the know, if all of us who knew what the situation was, and, you know, if somebody out there in the government or in, in a higher position, you know, was started speaking truth about this and started alerting people to what the problem is and everybody decided like, hey, this is a good idea. Everybody get on board. Then, you know, we could actually turn something, some kind of Titanic 
type ship around or at least turn it in a, in a more favorable direction. Um, but right now we're just, you know, we're, we're spitting in the wind. Um, we're, we're swimming upstream. We're, you know, whatever, whatever analogy you want to put on that. <clears throat> um, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace. Thank you.